I've been working for Bistel quite a long time, and you know, when in 2008 I was at the PDC in Los Angeles, and then um, Ray also came on stage and announced Windows Azure. So that was a huge thing, and now Windows Azure evolved as it is today, and some of the products as well, which came uh, available through services in Windows Azure, and also now you got the um, Bistock services available. <coughs> so that's quite an improvement, and it also showed that Microsoft is putting commitment into the product, so there were some discussion about, you know, how this is the product going forward. But as today, it's, it's here, and, and what I'm going to be focusing on, because it's, there are a lot of enhancements and features in uh, BizTalk 2013. What I'll be focusing on mainly is on the adapters, some of the new ones. So that will be um, the ones that you connect to the service bus and also the ones that support REST. So the ones I'm going to be talking to you uh, today, I'm going to walk through, show some examples, show some of the things that uh, are in the background, some of the characteristics of the adapter. Those are the things I'm going to be um, going through with you today. So it will be about service bus messaging, so that's interaction with the service bus. Some of the relay, the relay uh, capabilities that also are offered through the service bus, so that's basic HTTP relay and NetTCP relay. And I'm going to dive in a little bit into the REST support through the uh, web HTTP. So if you look at service bus messaging, uh, you can have messaging in the cloud if you know, have this highly available and scalable infrastructure in the cloud that provides um, a way of creating an infrastructure you can use to send up a lot of messages to and do kind of store and forward um, stuff. So, and it also enables you to do asynchronous communication and bridging basically what's on-premise, as so your current investments in, um, let's say, uh, AAP systems, line of business systems, uh, services, with, let's say, applications and services in the cloud. So it enables you to do and create hybrid solutions. So you got queues on one end, so that will provide loosely coupling, the same way you have on-premise with MSMQ. You'll have that in the cloud. So you can do loosely coupling. You can interact through it to a REST API or a .NET API, but also through the service bus messaging adapter that's offered for you with BizTalk uh, 2013. OK, let's look at a scenario. So you got a message sender, you have a client that sends a message to a queue, and that message is being picked up on the other side by a message receiver, which is BizTalk server in this case, configured using the service bus messaging adapter. So I'll go to my um, demo machine. And here I have an application which mimics basically um, let's say a sports watch. So I like to run a lot. So let's say I'm running with, uh, uh, let's say 10,000 other people for a 15K run or let's say a marathon. And every time I pass a certain mark, let's say five kilometers, 10 kilometers, my data is being sent up through the queue to uh, being picked up by Bistock server at a certain rate you want to configure. So there can be 10,000 messages coming in of people passing certain marks and it's being stored in a database. So, sorry, John, I spelled your name wrong. So let's say John is running. Uh, it doesn't matter, it's just a matter of speed. So let's say in ten, uh, at the 10 kilometer mark, you've run 52 uh, minutes. So the message is being sent up to the queue, and then it's being picked up by Bistock server, which will then just process it into a database. So here I have John Calloway, 52 minutes. So this is just what, uh, the way it works. So let's say you have a lot of people running. All these messages are just sent up to that queue, and then a certain rate is being picked up by BizTalk and processed into a database. <coughs> so if I just, um, before I'll just go into the characteristics of, um, of the adapter, I'd just like to point out that um, I think many of you are familiar with the service bus. So if you set up a service bus account, or sorry, with the uh, Windows Azure, and you set up a account, then you can manage all these services that are here, and to enable to manage those services, since it's multi-tenant, you also have to create a namespace, and for that namespace, you can basically manage, in this case, the service bus. And one key uh, thing here, too, is uh, some of the um, security you have to set up, some of the credentials you have to use to be authorized to use the service bus. So those are the two uh, things, key things I like to point out here before I'll dive into the characteristics of configuration of the um, service bus messaging adapter. So I've got an application, I've got a receive port, 
and within the receive port, I have a receive location. Within the receive location, I just choose the service bus messaging adapter. I click configure, and what you'll see here first is the address of the, um, the queue in this case. So you have the namespace here, which is in this case uh, btuknl, service bus windows.net, so that's just its default, and then you got the name in this case of the servers, and that's the queue, so that's the register's time queue, so that's where all the messages are being sent to. You got some other characteristics, you got the prefetch count, so basically you can determine the rate of amount of messages each time you want to pick up and, and send them, or at least receive them through BizTalk and process them. I did some tests, so I've set up a lot of clients and just sending out messaging. The latency is pretty low, so the service bus can take up, if you, uh, with, if you have multiple clients, up to a thousand messages a second. On the other end, um, to have BizTalk process that much, you have to enlarge the, pre uh, the prefetch count. But if you do it too high, you get more messages coming in than you can process, so you'll get into some of the throttling states. So. Definitely something to, to watch out for, don't set it too high. And you can also use sessions. So let's say you got some related messages combined and you want them, uh, let's say, in a uh, first-in, first-out pattern processed, you can use sessions on the client side but also on the, uh, the BizTalk side. So about authentication, you need to specify credentials to be able to use that um, service bus. So in this case, again, you have to put in your namespace the owner and also the key. So the key is what I just showed you uh, through that portal. And then you got the last step, which is basically some about messaging uh, properties and promoting those within your BizTalk um, application and environment if you want to do some further routing and other stuff. So this is behind the covers, straightforward example how you can send messages to, the, uh, to a service bus queue and pick them up through the um, service bus messaging adapter. And the other thing you have within the service bus is besides queues, you have also topics. Topics are similar to queues, but then you can have a kind of pops-up architecture because within topics you can have, you have, can have subscriptions, so you can send one message to multiple parties. And within those subscriptions, you can also set some limitations or filters through rules. <coughs> and again, you also with queues, you can do some load balancing and load leveling stuff, but you can also support, um, let's say, multicast, so the same way you have on-premise with BizTalk messaging engine supporting or having a pub sub architecture. So let's look at another scenario where a client will send a message or can send multiple messages, let's say orders, to a topic, which could be a, um, an order topic or I'll show you in a minute what I, topic I have. And on that topic you have multiple subscriptions. And on those subscriptions you can have, if you need be, rules so some of the messages will end up in a certain uh, subscriptions and other ones will turn up in another subscription. And then again, it can be picked up by the service bus messaging adapter and then for further processing. So let's look at that example. I'll just hide this a bit. So here I have some client code that enables me to send messages to a topic. So I have to provide some of the credentials, the, um, the namespace, and also the topic where I'm going to send the messages to. And on each message, I'll add just one property because I have some of the rules on my subscription. So in this case, I'll add a property called store location on the message I'm going to send out. So I'm going to be sending out three messages. And two messages will have store location one, and the other will have store location two. Now you can manage your uh, service bus through the Windows Azure portal, but you can also manage it through the uh, service bus explorer that comes with the Windows Azure SDK 1.7 and 1.8. So that's on the left uh, pane. You see the service bus, which you can connect to also providing credentials. And then you can see my namespace, and then you can see queues and topics. So within here I can create topics or queues. I can create subscriptions. And on the subscriptions, I can also set rules. So I'll pop this out a bit. So some of the properties here, and then 
you just open that up a bit. And then the rule or a filter is one is one. Basically, this is an audit queue where all the messages will go into. So for logging or auditing purposes, all the messages will be in here. Then I have another topic, which has a filter setting and only will receive the messages from store location one. And then store two will also only get the um, messages in with uh, the property store location two. So if I just run this, Free air orders will be sent to that topic, and three of them, of all of them, will be un help, end up in the audit queue. Two of them with store location one will end up in the um, store one subscription, and uh, order two with store location two will end up there. Bistock will pick it up, and in this case, will only, I'll just give you a quick view, topic, it will just throw it in an out folder. Go to that. Well, believe me, it will be sent to an, uh, uh, an out folder, and the store location two messages will just reside there because I haven't hooked up the service bus messaging adapter for that one. So if you look at the characteristics of the adapter for this sample, again, swift location. Oh, that figures it wasn't enabled. If I go in here, you got, again, the service bus messaging adapter are cho uh, chose to, uh, to be able to connect to that subscription. You have to configure, again, by the way, of providing the namespace, then the topic name, subscriptions, and then the name of the subscription itself. Again, you can set the prefetch count and either choose if you want to use sessions or not. Um, the authentication is configured in the same way. Again, provide the uh, namespace together with the credential and also the property step. You can do stuff with it if you want to. So this is interacting with topics and using, again, the service bus messaging adapter. So that's one side of the story. The other um, capabilities within the service bus are relays. So through a relay, you can send a message from a client to a server that resides within your um, firewall. So let's say that SAP sample, you've got this large, big enterprise and you don't want to, and it's not going to move to the cloud any time <coughs> soon. Or you want to maybe expose some of the functionality or you want to offer some messages to it. Or you want maybe get some resources out or some of the information or you want to post um, an order, let's say. Through an outbound connection configured both ways using the credentials I just showed you, that relay action can happen. So you can have bi-directional communication, request reply, or just uh, one-way messaging. And some of the things you could uh, circumvent or uh, prevent is like network error translation, firewall, or dynamic IP. Now, through BizTalk Server 2013, there are two adapters provided. So it's the basic HTTP relay and the net TCP relay. So the basic HTTP relay enables you to do send and receive messages to the service bus, endpoints, or listeners. And it's derived from the basic HTTP you know from DOPCF, which enables you to do locally within your on-premise uh, environment, set up a listener. So in this case, I have a one-way communication um, sample. So I'll just send out a message through the relay, and it will end up in Bistock server, which is configured with one receive location that has a basic HTTP relay. And if you configure it, you can basically have a um, set up as a, um, a listener within the cloud. So I'll move to my demo machine again. So I have a simple forms application. And I'll just type in some information. And this will be posted as a XML message to that relay endpoint, to that listener. So it's been accepted, so that's one of the things you'll get back from that relay as just a confirmation, hey, I've accepted this message from you, and the data sent is displayed below. And uh, for authentication card from the client side, I'm using the relay um, access token. You can also do it not, but then, of course, you're susceptible to denial server attacks and that kind of stuff. So I definitely would recommend just using at least the relay access token for security reasons. 
Now let's look at some of the um, characteristics of, of this um, sample. So I have a receive location configured with the uh, basic HTTP relay. The address again is the namespace and then also the name of the service. In this case I called it feedback. So you can give it any kind of name basically on the way you want to have your relay set up. I have a binding tab, so I have some configuration settings here and properties, also encoding and some of the throttling behavior. The security, so if I set it to none, then it will use the HTTP protocol and otherwise the other three it will go to the HTTPS. Here I also can enforce that the client needs to provide a token, so in this case the relay access token, so that's the token also showing you when I show, uh, demoed a bit the Windows Azure portal, that's why that's the credential you have to provide. You have the service discovery, if you enable it and put the discovery mode on public, what you'll see if you have the namespace and then the default, the uh, services windows.net, you see publicly listed these services. So those two listeners, uh, I have another listener we'll talk about in a minute, that's a net TCP listener, and the other one is the feedback listener configured with the basic HTTP. Now if I would stop this, just disable it, and we'll go back to listed services. It's gone. If I put it back on, you will see it's back. So going back to the configuration for uh, another second. So this is what you configure here. If you want to have an uh, your publicly listed service for RSS feed, this is where you need to configure it. If you put a discovery mode on private, then you won't see it. And on this end also you have to provide the access control service, at least you have to provide some of the credentials to set up the connection from the server side, at least what you're trying to, uh, to set up as a listener. So this is how the web HTTP works, just by one-way messaging. We also have the net TCP relay, so that's the other relay adapter that's present. Also enables you to send or receive messages, so basically also you set up a listener in the cloud. And it's derived from the net TCP binding. What I have here is a scenario where I will use the Service Bus Explorer, and it will, I will show you that it's a different Service Bus Explorer, it's created by Paolo Salvatore from Microsoft, where I will send a message through the relay to um, Bistock server, where there's again a, an a endpoint set up as a listener, um, configured through the net TCP relay, which will route that message to an orchestration that will do a very mathematical, intelligent algorithm calculation and will send back the message to, in this case, the client, which is the service bus. Again, I will go to my demo machine and this is the um, service bus explorer. Just clear lock a bit created by Paolo Salvatore. So it's available through Goat Gallery. I think it's a very useful tool because it also enables you to manage um, the namespace within your service bus. So you see the queues, topics, and you also see the relays here. So you, within the Visual Studio plugin, you will not see the relays, you only see the queues and topics and it enables you to set those things up, but you can also set up the queues and topics here, but the relays you have to set up through what I just showed you by enabling um, the receive locations configured with either the basic or net TCP relay bindings. So let's say I'm going to add numbers because this is also a great tool you can use to test your relay endpoints with. So instead of writing a client, you can just use this tool. So here I just, it basically does a calculation of adding one A and the other uh, number presented in B. It will send that up to that relay endpoint. That will be routed for an orchestration that will just add those two numbers and present the results back. Here you just select the binding. You will choose to send out that message. And you can also set some of the logging if you're interested in what goes behind the scenes. So if I hit start, it will push out this message. with 7 and 11. He sums some of the metadata, the headers, 
and you'll see the result back here is 18. So this is how you can leverage also the Service Bus Explorer tool. And if I go to um, my application, Problem Solver, I'll just show you quickly how it's configured. It's just chosen, chosen the different um, binding. Again, the configuration is straightforward. So it's the namespace and then the name of your service or the listener. You got the binding, you got the security tab, same thing. And this is if you want to do anything with the message itself. It's uh, related to some of the other WCF based uh, adapters. Pretty straightforward how you can set up listeners through the service bus infrastructure. Let's go to the REST support that's offered by uh, BISTOC 2013, that's the web HTTP, which enables you to send and receive messages through RESTful service. So there are a lot of uh, APIs these days that are offered for you on the line and giving you access to resources through RESTful endpoints. And so through BISTOC server configuring uh, or using that web HTTP adapter, you can interact with those RESTful endpoints. So you can do operations like get, delete, uh, pro, put, and post. So what I've created, or leveraged the demo a bit, which cre was created by Saravana last year using the, um, the 2010 R2. Um, I extended a bit using the 2213 uh, beta bits. I created a client, which is a, tweet a trade application, which is just a basic, simple Windows form, which will send out a message uh, containing a certain handle. I will punch in. It's being picked up by a receive location that is configured with uh, the WCF web VS HTTP, just exposing two schemas for the BizTalk service uh, publishing wizard. It will be routed to an send port that will interact with a RESTful endpoint. That's the Twitter API. Based on the handle, I will put together with my request a get operation to that RESTful endpoint, and we'll get back the results, and that will be present it back to my application. So, this is my Twitter tweets. I'll just put in your handle, John. I'll press grab tweets. It will be sent to BizTalk. It will just be routed to that um, resource. And it will <coughs> give the results back. This is correct because John is actually present here at the BizTalk Summit. So let's go into the characteristic of this adapter. Let's go to the Twitter Tweets application, send port. So I got a web HTTP solicit response towards that RESTful endpoint. Now, if you want to send a request out to a RESTful endpoint using get operation, you're not allowed to send a, uh, with it message body. So basically, you have to strip that up using the <coughs> remove body pipeline here. What I've learned uh, from demos also last Monday with uh, Guru from the product group is that this will be um, configurable in a later version coming up. So in the beta, you still have to write pipelines to get the message off, body off or enter a message body. I'll show you that in a second. That will be configurable. So now, for now, you just have to remove it for using a, um, a pipeline. So I've got the address here. So this is one of the many RESTful endpoints the Twitter API is offering. This is just user timeline. And to enable to get that data out from this case, the handle of John Calloway, I have to add the screen name, which is one of the parameters you have to provide for that get operation, and the handle. And the handle is something dynamically which you have to configure by uh, using a property schema. So the property schema within my solution has one a property, promote a property, which is called handle. And you have to map that through variable mapping in the adapter. You have some of the other things like binding, security, which I won't go into. You can set it up, behavior, proxy, messages. So this way it works to get a parameterized get from a RESTful endpoint with um, using Twitter. Yeah, you can do that with any kind of REST API that um, offers RESTful endpoints, providing those operations. So I, 
in a lab version also pr uh, took another AS API concerning airports where I just did a similar uh, thing with using this, sam this sample, but then just sticking the airport code out and just got information back from airports. What you can also do, and I still have some time left, is basically set up a kind of RESTful service yourself, which I call running times, and then do the other way around. So I just do a get operation of a um, of a service I created through also the Bisto publishing wizard, but then you can choose the web HTTP binding, and, it, and in the end will provide a service that being hosted in IIS, and you can do, let's say also a get operation, but then of course there isn't a body, so what I've done is I create a message body and that's being routed to, in this case, the database I used in another sample, so that's this database, and it will get some of the data out based on a runner ID, and I'll show you that. So again, here I have the runner ID, and again it's done with variable mapping. So I have the runner ID as a promoted property within my solution. So that from the request message, or at least from the URL, that uh, ID is picked up and being put in a message that is used for a request to that database, and then the resource will, resource will be get out and provided back to me. So if I call this URL, with my ID, it will go to that, um, yeah, let's say RESTful endpoint, get that runner ID out, use that as a query to that database and present back the data in this case of all my running times when I'm running the 15K. So these are the passing times at the 5K mark, 10K mark, 15K mark. And this is another one. So, this is basically how you can leverage that web HTTP uh, binding. So what I've done, I've run you through some of the, uh, the new adapters. I haven't talked about the, um, the SSTP adapter, just focus myself for this talk on those four, what I call cloud-related adapters. And I think these new adapters will bring the on-premise systems closer to, uh, to the cloud. So that's basically my conclusion of what I saw when I just worked with all these adapters and trying to find out how the way it works and how I could, well, these are fairly simple solutions, but you create more sophisticated solutions using these adapters and BISTOC 2013. Now, you also saw, for instance, what I find a very useful tool from a developer perspective, which is the Service Bus Explorer from uh, Paolo Salvatore, enabling you to do some testing, browsing and stuff, so you don't have to write a client. You can use that to um, to do some testing with the service bus and the relays. So these presentations will be provided to you through, uh, through Saravana. I just did a collection of the resources and I grouped them together with the, uh, the adapters here. So you got the um, general documentation, you got some um, resources listed for service bus messaging, the relays and the web HTTP. Okay, here's some of my contact details, so my email address. Um, you can link for me through LinkedIn, my Twitter handle, and my blog. And, well, this is basically what I had to present to you today, some of my findings and experience with using these adapters. Um, so, time for questions, Sar Saravana, or do you need to move those to the Q&A? Where's... No Saravani, he's always he's hidden himself. <laughs> well, are there any questions? Because, well, there's probably some time to take one or two. What part one of the primary is using to add the root message body to the rest um, endpoint? And getting rid of it and adding it? Uh, rid of it is just going through a pipeline in the encoding stage and then just um, adding an empty body to it. Okay. So I can show you the code later on if you want. And the other way around is just the message comes in and I just, there is a, uh, I did notice there is a body, but it's completely empty. So I just provide, in this case, the, um, the message I need to for the request to, to that database. So it's a little bit hard coded, so. Can a body be JSON? Or is it always JSON? Well, what I just, uh, I can show you that. Um,
In this case, I choose for the content type application XML in this case. Well, we could try, you know, this is a good showcase. Let's see if this works. So it presented back in a different format. Let's see how this runs. Oh, it's giving me back in the same way. Let's try it again. Well, it's, it's definitely coming back in a different way. Just put it on a desktop. <coughs> Let's see what the outcome will be. Let's use just Notepad. Well, it's coming back in a different format, it seems, but... Now, I haven't done that much with JSON formats. I know it's useful for mobile applications because it's uh, less overhead and stuff, so... I have a couple of customers using JSON, actually, instead yeah. of RISDL. So. Yeah, and there are some examples, I believe, by Kent Weir that also uses JSON. So mm -hmm. in some of my uh, links in there, you'll see that one of our fellow uh, integration MVPs has done something with the queues, topics, but also with, you know, using mobile stuff. So he's also describing the ways you can do things with JSON. I'm not really well doing ASP or mobile. I'm just an integration guy, and the only programming skills I have is just Windows Forms. <laughs> yes? Um, for the relay, basic relay binding, what are the other client authentication types on the adapter? Let's have a look. For, uh, yeah. I just what the options are. There are a couple of options, that's true. Let's go to the feedback application where I'll use the um, web HTTP relay. Yeah. So if you go to security, you have none, which will deflect back to HTTP. You've got transport, you've got message. So you can type, you have some credentials there, and you can use some uh, encryption as well. Also um, providing a uh, certificate. And, then, and under the relay uh, This is just a non or access token. Okay. Otherwise, you have to further drill down for the access control service if you want to leverage more of the security capabilities within the service bus. So if you've got a client that's 